Hi, welcome back. In this video, we are going to discuss one more very important Spring Boot feature that is embedded servers. Well, as we know that Spring Boot application comes with a default embedded web server that is Tomcat server. All right. So it's a very important feature, guys. We no need to, you know, download and install a web server or application server on our machine. Okay. So Spring Boot provides a very important feature that is, you know, embedded server. So Spring Boot application comes with a default web server that is embedded web server that is called a Tomcat server. Okay. And basically Spring Boot application supports three very popular embedded servers. First is Tomcat, second Jetty, and then third is Undertown. Okay. By default, Spring Boot comes with Tomcat server. And if you want to use Jetty or Undertown, then you need to exclude Tomcat dependency from your Spring Boot application and then you need to add Jetty or Undertown dependency to your Spring Boot application. Okay, then you will be able to run your Spring Boot application in an embedded Jetty or Undertown web server. Okay, that we will see a bit later. Just try to understand embedded servers in a Spring Boot application. Okay, three types of embedded servers, Tomcat, Jetty and Undertown. Now, we have talked about a lot about embedded server, right? So what exactly is embedded server? So whenever we have a Java application and then we include a server as a part of that Java application that is called embedded server in a Java application. Okay. So traditionally how we deploy our Java application. So we typically, uh, you know, download a Tomcat server from the internet and then will install that Tomcat server in our machine and then we package our Java application as a war file and then we deploy that war file in an external Tomcat server and then we start the server. So this is how we basically deploy our war file in a Tomcat server, right? Let's say if we include that Tomcat server as a part of our Java application, then the Tomcat becomes embedded Tomcat server in our Java application. Okay. So let me show you the diagram here. So look at here, these are the steps when we deploy our Spring Boot application without embedded server. And these are the steps when we deploy our Spring Boot application with the embedded server. Let's first consider if we don't use embedded server, then these are the steps. First step is we need to, you know, install the Java and then we download and set up a web server. Consider we have a Tomcat server. And then we need to package our Spring Boot application as a war file and we explicitly deploy our war file in a web server that is Tomcat server. So these are the steps typically we do whenever we deploy Spring Boot application without embedded server. Okay. So look at here this step. So these steps take some time, right? We need to download and set up web server. Okay. So instead of downloading and set up a web server or on our machine, why not we include this server as a part of our Java application? So that will be better and that will save our time, right? Okay. And instead of deploying this war file explicitly in a web server, then why not whenever we package uh, our application, then why not we run simply uh, this package as a Java application? So we can also, you know, remove this step. Okay. So whenever we include server as a part of Java application, then we can remove these two steps. Okay. So here is the result. So whenever we deploy our Spring Boot application with embedded server, then we need, we can skip these two steps. Okay. So we need to have only installed Java. After that, we package our Spring Boot application as a jar file, which already contains an embedded server. And simply we run the jar file as a normal Java application. That's it. We don't have to, you know, make a war file. We don't have to explicitly copy that war file in a web apps folder of the Tomcat server. And then explicitly we need to start the Tomcat server. So we don't have to do in case of, you know, embedded server. Okay. So this will simplify a lot, right? So that's why Spring Boot, uh, you know, comes with a feature that is embedded server. Okay. Spring Boot application by default comes with embedded server that is a Tomcat server. Okay. Tomcat server. And uh, if you want to have a Jetty or 
under town server in your spring boot application as an embedded server then you simply need to remove this tomcat dependency and then you need to add a jetty or under town dependency okay so that we'll see a bit later okay i hope you understood what is the embedded server and how we can include that embedded server in a spring boot application well whenever we include our server as a part of java application then we call it as an embedded server okay just try to understand the concept now let's understand more about embedded servers so let's jump into id and now i'm i will show you how the spring boot application comes with default web server that is tomcat server go to pom.xml and here we have a dependency spring boot starter web dependency so this dependency internally provides you know default tomcat as a embedded server so let me show you so just dive into this dependency and again go to inside this dependency and here you can see spring boot starter tomcat okay so we don't have to add this dependency to our palm.xml because this spring boot starter web dependency internally provides a tomcat dependency okay so whenever we add spring boot starter web dependency to our project then this dependency will provide a tomcat server as an embedded server by default guys we don't have to add tomcat dependency again okay so let me jump into this this dependency so look at here spring boot starter tomcat and if you go inside this dependency you can see tomcat dependencies okay so whatever the tomcat source code that you have in a tomcat server that source code is available uh, with these dependencies okay guys so by looking into these dependencies you can see that by default tomcat server is a part of spring boot application and whenever we run our spring boot application then spring boot application will run in this tomcat server as a standalone okay we don't have to explicitly download and install the tomcat server spring boot comes with a default web server that is tomcat server okay so let's go ahead and let's run the spring boot application and let me show you how our spring boot application will run in an embedded tomcat server so look at here our spring boot application is running in a embedded tomcat server okay embedded tomcat web server which is running on port 8080 by default the tomcat server will run on port 8080 but you can customize this port okay you can give any port that you want so you need to provide that port by using some you know property so you can go to application dot properties here and you can define the properties something like server dot port okay by using this property you can just change the tomcat server port by default it is 8080 now you can go ahead and you can you can give 8081 or whatever the port that you want okay great so this is how the tomcat server comes with spring boot application as embedded server now the question is i want i don't want to use embedded server i want to use other embedded server like jetty or undertown then how how i can configure uh, you know jetty or undertown uh, as an embedded server in our spring boot application well let me show you how to do it so go to palm.xml and this spring boot starter web dependency it internally provides a tomcat dependency right so we we have to exclude that dependency from this spring boot starter web dependency and then we need to add separate jetty or undertown dependency okay so in order to do that just just call uh, here the tag exclusions and inside that add the dependency exclusion tomcat now we have excluded spring boot starter tomcat dependency from spring boot starter web now we can able to add you know other embedded servers for example jetty or undertown now let me show you first how to add jetty as an embedded server so let me quickly copy this dependency and paste it here okay let me remove this scope 
and here instead of test we can just add jetty here okay that's it now let's go ahead and let's run our spring boot application in embedded jetty web server so go go to our spring boot main entry point class right click run as spring boot application now instead of running our spring boot application in embedded tomcat server now it will run in an embedded jetty server so look at here embedded jetty jetty web server and by default jetty server will run on port 8080 but you can able to customize this port okay you can change this port by you know adding the property in application dot properties file so you can add a property called server dot port and here you can specify the port 8081 or any port that you want okay by default the port is 8080 let's say we provide a port 8081 okay now if you stop the server and if you run the spring boot application then you can able to see that spring boot application should run on a jetty web server on port 8081 so look at here so this is how you can change the port okay now we'll see how to add undertown server as an embedded server so go to pom.xml again okay and here we have earlier added jetty so we just replace from jetty to undertown okay undertown so in order to run our spring boot application in embedded undertown server again go to our spring boot main entry point class right click and run as a spring boot app okay and uh, let's see yeah there we go our spring boot application is running on undertow web server on port 8081 so the port 8081 because we have added a port 8081 right so let me remove this and if you can run spring boot application again then the undertow server will run on port 8080 And there we go our spring boot application is successfully running on embedded undertow web server on port 8080 all right guys this is how you know we run our spring boot application on different embedded web servers okay we have seen how to run our spring boot application in a tomcat server jetty server and undertown server okay just remember it's a very important feature guys we don't have to manually download and install the web servers okay spring boot come application comes with add embedded servers so we can use embedded servers to run our spring boot application quickly and yeah we obviously save the time all right great